Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to two fairly unknown methods that you can use with your dictionaries to solve one of the biggest, if not the biggest problem when working with a dictionary. And in the process you're gonna get, in some scenarios, twice the performance or more. If you like the of content and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsters.com. Now before I move on I'd like to let you know that I just launched my brand new course Cloud Fundamentals AWS Services for C-Sharp Developers. And thanks to a very generous sponsorship from AWS, this course is free for everyone to enroll. You just click that link in the description, you sign up, you enroll, and it is yours to keep. In that course, I'm introducing you to the most popular services of AWS, especially the ones that us as C-Sharp developers will definitely use. And you can actually build real systems with the knowledge you're going to gain out of this course. So even if you are not into cloud at all, or even if you're using another cloud provider, you're going to find something there to learn because there's cloud patterns and other practices that you can learn and adopt. And to celebrate the launch, I'm also offering the first 100 of you a 15% discount for any of my courses or any of the bundles at nickchapsters.com. So to claim that, use discount code AWS15 at checkout. And again, a massive, massive thank you to AWS. This could not be possible without them. All right, so let's see what I have here. I have a .NET 7 application over here. And by the way, the two methods we're going to take a look at were actually added in .NET 6. So you're going to need at least .NET 6 to use them. And I'm going to start with a simple example. Let's assume we have a class over here. Let's take a look at the first problem. I'm going to say that I have a dictionary over here, which has one instance of this existing class already in there. But then what I want to do is actually have a new one. So I'm going to say var my class equals new my class and they're both going to have a different grid because I'm using a default value over here and what I want to do is a very common scenario we're working with dictionaries where you say that if the dictionary doesn't contain key of my class dot id then dictionary and we're going to go ahead and set that value so I'm going to say my class dot id equals my class and by the way the problem I will talk about would be the same if you use the add method which allows you to do what the line above does as well. So you said something like this, you'd still have that problem. But let's assume you're using this simple setter. Now, in order to understand what the problem is, you need to understand how a dictionary works. A dictionary is in effect a hash table. And I'm not going to go too in depth into hash tables, but you have to understand that the way they work is that you can have anything as a key in this case, which is good, but you can have any reference type, it can be a class, it can be an, an integer, it can be anything and those values will actually be taken hashed in some cases in different ways and then set as the real key behind the scenes and the reason why we do that is because the promise of a hash table is that on average things like insert search and delete and also update will be of all one time complexity meaning constant time and the idea on why this works conceptually is because you take a value only one thing can eventually lead to that hash that you're going to set the value into so the process is always the same and you always land in the same location for your item in your hash table or dictionary. Now in some ways I'm oversimplifying here can actually go way more in depth and if you check the set method over here you're gonna see that the try and set you can follow the key and how it is used and how the get hash code method is used or the compare is used if it is not null and yada yada yada, it goes too in depth. You can check that and value types actually work differently and reference types work differently as you'd expect really. But in any case, the problem that we have here is that we're doing this hashing operation, this hash lookup twice, one for the contains key and once for the setter or the add. And this would be the same if you use things like the try get value method of the dictionary. You, you can get the value, but if it doesn't exist and you need to set it, you're going to have to do the lookup again. Now, the alternative of this would be that you might only want to operate on something if it is contained. So only if the dictionary contains key, then my existing class goes over here dot ID only and only then take that and do something. So you might say something like, dictionary and check my existing class dot id and in this scenario is actually where try get value might come in handy because you can say if dictionary dot try get value and you can pass down my existing class dot id and then out var the value and then since you have the value you can set it because in this case it is a reference type so any changes to things of this reference type let's say the id will be reflected in that type in the dictionary but this is completely different if you have something like 
a struct here or a value type. So let's say we have something like this over here, my struct with the same GUID. If we try to just copy that and do the same thing and say dictionary two, and I'm gonna have to quickly create an equivalent dictionary for a struct, here we go. Then as you can see over here, we have basically two problems that you might have missed. The first one is that since this is a struct over here, it will be copied. We no longer have that reference. It's not a reference type, meaning that any change I do here is actually ineffective. I'm still going to have to go ahead and after I changed it, set that value because the struct is a value type, it's just copied. And this can be even more problematic with bigger structs because yes, they are structs, they're value types, but copying large structs can be very, very inefficient. So in this scenario, not only you have the duplicate hash lookup, but you also have the struct inefficiency. Actually, this should have been something like this. Okay, this is better. And then you'd have to say dictionary two, and then set the value to be the new val two. This is a very oversimplified example, but you get the point. We have three main problems over here. We have a duplicate hash lookup if we want to check that something is not contained in a dictionary and only then added and operate on it. We have a dictionary hash lookup if we only want to operate on something if it exists in a dictionary. In this case, because we have a struct, we have a duplicate hash lookup if we're using a value type over here that we only want to update if something is contained in the dictionary. And then we also have the big struct copying problem. But good news, Microsoft actually added two methods which you can use right now to deal with this. And let's start with the first one, which is if something is not contained in the dictionary, then go ahead and set it and work on it without having to do a duplicate lookup. So this would be the old way of doing things. And the new way of doing things would look something like this. Let me just push everything below. We're going to say ref var val or new and I'm going to explain why I'm using this name equals ref collections marshall and we've actually looked into this class before in a previous video but in that video we talked about the as span method here we're going to talk about the get value ref or null ref and the get value ref or add default methods and I'm going to use in this example the get value ref or add default method and here we accept a dictionary and key and we get an out parameter called exists so what we're going to say is pass down the dictionary pass down the key which is yes the id over here and then out var existed here we go a bit long but i'm just gonna break it up so you can see it now before i move any further both with this method and the other method i'm gonna show in a second, both of these approaches can be unsafe and you need to make absolute certain that while you're operating or you're using this ref var, there is no items added or removed from that dictionary you're working on. Big, big, big disclaimer. You need to be certain that this won't happen. But assuming you can bake into your code this guarantee, you can now check if it existed. And since what you wanted was that if it didn't exist, you can do something and then add it then you can say if it did not exist and at this point it actually is in the dictionary with a default value and you can go ahead and since you have this ref var here of that value in the dictionary you can go ahead and do anything you want with it so for example you can just set it and because this is a ref var it will actually set it in the dictionary let me just quickly debug this to show you exactly how it works here we go so as you can see the dictionary only has this my class which is my existing my class over here it does not have the my class with id e83 it only contains the one with 48f so what i'm going to do is step over this at this point and as you can see now the dictionary does have this new thing but as you can see it doesn't have that value it technically is null so here you have the existed b false it did not exist but because you have this ref var you can just simply set that value to what you want it to be and as you can see now we have it over here and we only did one hash lookup in the process so this completely fixes the problem of having to do this duplicate hash lookup over here by effectively just adding this default value if it doesn't exist and tell you back if it existed or not of course if it did exist it's going to say existed true and do nothing of course you will still get that ref var but you're going to get a ref var of something that did exist and you'll be able to cross check it here with this boolean but now we solved that problem this same approach can also be used with a struct even though it is a struct and it is a value type because it's a ref 
var setting it will set whatever that reference is in the dictionary. Now let's see how we can use this other method to solve the struct issue over here. So this will be the old way of solving the struct issue and I'm gonna just quickly comment that out and say ref var val or null over here and I'm gonna say ref collections marshall and I'm gonna use the other method the get value ref or null ref and this one only accepts the dictionary too in this case because we want to use the struct one and then the key being my struct dot id here we go now this method as the name implies will return either a value ref or a null ref and what we want to do here is say that if the value that we have here is not null ref so for that i'm going to say unsafe dot is null ref and negate it of course and i'm going to pass down the source which is val or null over here and remember, all I want to do is update the ID over here. So in here, all I want to say is val or null dot ID equals GUID dot new GUID. And I don't need to reset anything because I have a ref var to that struct value. So if I go ahead and I just quickly debug this, then as you can see over here, this is not a null ref. This is a struct and the ID is E for B and in the dictionary the ID is also as you can see E for B but if I go ahead and I set that value over here for that struct because it is a ref var then in my dictionary as well it will be a 0 F0 which is what I just set it over here. So these two methods just solve all three problems and of course this also solves the copying a big struct problem because now you just have a reference to that struct you don't have a whole new copied struct but what does that really mean in terms of performance well i actually wrote some benchmarks so let's see what they look like so i'm using benchmark.net for all of this and this is what the benchmarks look like so i'm trying to test as much as i can for the problems i expressed in this video including things like using a string as a key over here and then i also have a string as a value i have a normal reference type as a value and then i have a big struct as a value as well and the big struct is not too big it's only 20 properties long but is fairly big and I'm trying to be as efficient as I can with my setup so I'm setting some things for existing lookups and non-existing lookups the way these benchmarks are written are in sets of two where I'm using the try get value and then I'm simply setting the value to show the impact of the duplicate hash lookup thing over here and then update an existing value and in the other test I'm just using the get value ref or null ref to update an existing thing in the exact same way and then I have things for all the different types I am checking over here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say up in the top return and I'm going to run the benchmark. Now this list is obviously not exhaustive. I'm not using the add default counterpart for example of this. So I highly recommend you take that code if you want to and you change it in a way that makes sense for what you're using to see what the impact would be. I'm just going to give you a very general view of how the two things compare of having a duplicate hash lookup and not having one. So I'm going to go ahead and just run this and wait all right so results are back and let's see what we have here so as you can see first with the string vol the try get value 35.9 nanoseconds while the value ref or null ref 28.6 so definitely faster here same thing with the string key 28.3 nanoseconds compared to 16.0 now the simple class value to update existing is relatively fast and we kind of expected that in both cases so they're very very close but you can see that we have more than a 2x performance increase with the big struct as a value because you don't have to copy it and reset it you just get a reference to that and you update so we go from 43.2 nanoseconds to 19.4 Four. Now, am I saying you should just take this and update everything to use it? No, but if you have this struct scenario, I highly recommend looking into it because that one can really be problematic. The other ones have performance increases as well, but we're talking in so small time spans that it may or may not matter for what you're doing. What I'm here to do is just show you what the problem is, what the difference is, and then it's your responsibility to take that knowledge and apply it to your code. So always be measuring. Microsoft was even considering creating a new dictionary slim class that would have this logic baked in right off the get-go. They never ended up pushing that into the main branch, stayed into the experience mental branch but I might take a look into that at some point because this is a problem they had and they're using this 
actively. So I'm sure that there must be some of you that might also want to be able to solve the same problem. But what do you think? Were you ever wondering how to solve this? Have you encountered this? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe more to like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.